we've, we've looked at big picture, kind of uh, the, the quest, the money. What can we do here that really you can leave here with and use? I'm trying to put myself in your position here and, and curate some other thoughts from, um, from designers and entrepreneurs. So this man, Rudy Ruig, uh, was a, a partner in the Mueller Brockman Agency, which in the middle of the last century was the Swiss design organization. They did gorgeous posters and every, they definitely had a real look about them. They had a precision and a cleanness that, um, you know, the joke at that time was the only export from Switzerland bigger than chocolate and watches was graphic design. Ruig uh, was very kind to see me. I mean, I called him up. He had no idea who I was. I said, I'm in town for a day. I'd like to, I've always admired your work. Can I come and talk to you? He said, I can give you 20 minutes. Uh, you know, he looked at my work and he said, well, you have to understand, we don't really hire portfolios. We hire people. If you work here, your work is going to look like our house style. So we just want to know, you know, we're looking for people that are, that are educated and poised and, and, uh, and understand the, the elegance that we're trying for. I think this is an you know, this important thing to remember. When you're going on an interview, your portfolio is a part of it, but you are the real product and how you conduct yourself. I mean, you want to know a really easy one? Write a thank you note after, your, after you get an interview. Not one person in 20 will write a paper thank you note and put it in the mail. People send an email. People will re remember that. Oh, this person has manners. This person has upbringing, you know? I mean, it costs you a buck. And, uh, and you'd be surprised how few people, even if they know it, even if their mother beat it into them, they still don't do it. Here's kind of the, uh, here's another person who's, um, mentoring I sought when I traveled to Europe. Um, uh, Heinz Edelman uh, also had a very discernible style, but his was a wild style. He was all over the map. He was always one jump ahead of the imitators. Um, he's best known for his work on the movie Yellow Submarine, uh, which probably looks kind of like a period piece now, but you can't overestimate the impact that that movie and his creativity had on animated film. Before Submarine, the gold standard was Disney, you know, Fantasia, Mickey Mouse. That was creativity in, in, in animation. Submarine absolutely blew the top off of that, and, and suddenly nothing was impossible in animation after this. So, so I, I was interested in talking to him because of that, but also because every time you saw his work, you could recognize it, but, but it, it was different. And I, I asked him, you know, how do, you, how do you do this? How do you get such, so much energy and so much creativity, so much difference, uh, and, and you still sort of have a sense of style? He said, well, if people start interfering with my work or if it gets repetitive, I'd fire my customers and go find new customers. And he said, every 10 years, I burn my portfolio. Now, you have to take yourself back to before there was an internet. Your portfolio in those days was this was your life in a case. If you lost that, you didn't have anything. Maybe, maybe you still had slides in your mother's basement, but he took that, which all of us sweated over when we were in college, and it was like our precious thing. Every 10 years, he'd burn it and start over. He said, if you, if you don't do that, if you don't force yourself to take risks, you kind of get stale and repetitive, and people come to you for the same thing over and over again. Um, so I offer this as a... You know, one of the things I was really concerned about early in my career was should I be trying to have a personal style? You had Mueller Brockman doing these incredible, you could tell a Mueller Brockman poster at 100 feet. Heinz Edelman had a definite style. You know, Pushpin had a definite style. There were all these styles that were out there. I thought, you know, should I be trying to have a personal style? Should I be trying to make something that people will recognize? Edelman answered that question for me in an elegant way. He basically said, you can't help but have a personal style but you don't get there by trying for it. You get there by trying to destroy it. You get there by trying to go beyond what you've done before. You try to play on the biggest possible playing field of your talent. If you've, if you've done something successfully, go 180 degrees and try the other way. If, if you're good drawing with your right hand, try your left. You know, um, if, you know, change, change the music you listen to. Do everything you can to enlarge. I, I, I went to New York not knowing a soul, um, but I had my AIGA membership card, and at that time AIGA was only New York, so I called him up and I got a hold of this man who was at the time the executive director. Marvelous fellow. He's 100 years old this year, for as far as I know he's still alive. 
uh, love designers. He wrote a terrific book on typography, typography to uh, typographic communications today. I recommend it. You know, he welcomed me in, he sat me down, he said, so you're here to look for a job? I said, yeah, I want to work in book publishing. He said, okay, great. He wrote down a few names. He said, and who do you want to see? And I said, well, I want to see, you know, Paul Rand and Milton Glaser and all the, I rattled off a couple dozen famous names. And he said, so he wrote down some things on his page. He said, well, you have to understand that everybody that comes to New York wants to see them too, and their time is limited. He said, you, you can't call them and expect them to call you back. Don't sit and wait by the phone. You're going to have to keep up kind of a low-level charm offensive. It might take a while. Um, I didn't realize at the time how long that meant, but, um, but this idea of, of being charming but being persistent, I think, is, is a very useful attitude to adopt when you're trying to get established in your career. Um, the other thing he said to me that I especially liked as I was going out the door, he said, now don't be a stranger, let me know where you land. He, he had made this suggestion, he said, you know, you're at a time in your career, you're looking for a job. Some people get depressed and they stop making phone calls. He said, don't look at it that way. This is the, one of the most exciting times in your whole career. It's like you're, you have a, 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 an aerial view of your profession. You can call people and say, I'm looking for work, I like your work, can I come in? He said, some, yeah, some of the gatekeepers say no, but you'll get, you have the ability to get in a lot of places and, and, and ask questions, and that's something that you don't get at every stage of your career. So, so I just love this idea of you know, you know, we're be looking at it as a high altitude, not a stuck down here in the mud with no job. When I went to New York, there was no internet, there was no fax. There were basically three ways to contact somebody. You could knock on the door, you could mail them a letter, or you could call them on the phone. I was lazy, I called. So I, I called a number of people and the answer that I get was, well, I'm really busy right now, call me a week from today and we'll set up a time. And I heard that a couple of times before I realized that, you know, so I would write on my card, call later. For some reason, when I talked to this guy, Herb Stern, he said that, and I thought, you know, maybe there's something to this about this calling at exactly the same time in a week. So I called him at the appointed time and I reminded him that he had said that he would see me. He said, yeah, come on up tomorrow morning. And so I asked him about this, and he, he said, well, I, I said, is this some kind of a test? He said, well, it's like an employer survival skill. He said, we get, you know, we, we, we get hundreds of people that want to show, our work, show their work here, and probably most of their portfolios are pretty good, but 90% don't have their act together to make that second phone call. They, just, they lose their appointment book, or they forget, or they're not that interested, or... So I don't have to see 90% of the portfolios, and I don't want to hire the person that's disorganized anyway. Just be aware that, that you're being tested when you, uh, you know, when you interface with organizations. Be buttoned up. Do what you say you're going to do. You're, you're being hired for skills other than just your portfolio. All right, here's a really, here's a really interesting guy. Now, this, uh, Ivan Chermayoff and his partner, uh, Tom Geismar, are still practicing design. Uh, they've got a new generation of management, they're in their 80s, but they have been doing, they have put out one of the longest strings of excellent work of anybody in the business. They do really uh, excellent branding, high profile work, they're very well connected. Um, took, took a lot of doing to get seen by them and, and, and I, you know, I kind of asked him, well, what are you, what are you looking for? He said, you know, every, every designer that has a design education knows about design. What we're looking for is people who have broad knowledge that can relate to a wide variety of client concepts and business models. Um, so uh, I think it's when you're being interviewed, well, you want to demonstrate that, that you're culturally aware, that you're intellectually curious. Um, you know, how, how you do that is different for each person, but I think it's, a, you know, be, be, people they are hiring people, not portfolios. If you look on Behance or on Upwork or any of the online marketplaces, you realize right away there are a ton of us with creative skills, instincts, education. I mean, there's just a staggering number out there. Um, and it, it can kind of feel like depressing or, and you look at their portfolios and there's so much great work and you say, oh man, nobody's gonna hire me. Uh, it took me a long time to learn that my creative peers were not my competition, that they were, um, that, that it was more important to cooperate and to build a network and to know who was good at what 
and for other people to know that I was good at certain things. I'm embarrassed to tell you how long it took me to, you know, I mean, there were all these other designers and they all had great work, but I didn't want to know them, you know. I was, you know, I, I thought I was terrific. I wanted to go right to the top and, you know, I, I was wham, 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 straight ahead. I had blinders on and it's, it's really important to develop a professional network. It's one of the reasons why now I invest time in AIGA. That, that wide, deep professional network, whether it's AIGA or something else you choose, it's crucial. You're, I mean, you can get along without it for a while. Um, you, you have your talent, you have your youth, you can pull all-nighters, you can do stuff and, and get ahead. But you're going to hit a time in your career, like Jim Burke said, where you, you go fallow. Your best customer goes bankrupt. You get fired for no reason. Uh, you get sick or somebody in your family needs your time. That's when you need that professional network to buoy you up and, and be there for you. All right, so I think we've covered sort of a melange of stuff and hopefully you can sort it out, make some sense out of it. Let's do a quick summary. Number one, make a plan. Make a plan that incorporates the coin of your own realm. What do I care about? What, what, what feels important to me? It's okay to change it, but make the plan. If you're really edgy, burn your portfolio every 10 years. I could never bring myself to do it. Grow your network. Now, I use LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, but I don't confuse those with a real network. A real network is somebody that cares about you, somebody that gives you a bear hug when they see you. A real network is people who understand your deep yearning, who have figured out what your special talent is, and who you can collaborate with to do projects bigger than yourself. A real network is what you get with, an, you know, I keep coming back to AIGA because it's where I invest in my network, but it, there's lots of other ways to get it. But the important thing is, this is a lifelong pursuit and it will pay you back a thousand fold. It's as important as your professional education. I heard this from a politician, um, don't do stupid stuff, but I think it applies very well to, the, to a creative career. Because you'll get opportunities to come your way and people will say, oh, you're, you're a designer. Um, I don't have any money, but could you do this for me? Um, you know, you can run that through James Craig's uh, list and know right away that that's a stinker. You don't want that job. Well, I mean, maybe it's a cause you really believe in and they don't have any money, but you think, well, I could, I could make the world better. So maybe you decide to do that one. Or the project is kind of meh, but that's a lot of money. So you say, well, okay, I could do something else with that money. I'll do that project. But the point is, you're not obligated to take every stupid job that comes your way. You're not obligated to work free. People think, oh, creative people, they're sort of spaced out. They just like having fun. They don't really care about the money. Say no. You know, don't do stupid stuff. Inve you, your, your time is a precious resource. Use it for something good. If, if you don't like their opportunity and you don't have anything else to do, do something that you make up that's better. You know? uh, use, use that talent. Don't die with a single good idea left in you untried. If somebody says, could you do this free, and it's something that maybe has pretty good visibility potential or something, you can play Paul Rand and you say, well, I'm kind of busy, I would like to help you out. Uh, I'll do it free, but we're gonna do it my way. I'm not gonna change it. If you don't like it, tell me that. We won't work together. You know, you can, you can get that. You know, if you're gonna do it for nothing, you got some leverage. So trust, you can't do great design without a relationship of trust. Uh, be a creative friend to your customers, meaning uh, get, get, to, get to know what ticks, learn about their organization. You have the ability as an outsider, in a, if, you're, if you're a freelancer, to observe and do things that an insider can't do. When you win, when you get publicity, when, when it really works, make them the star. So seek mentoring. A mentor is not necessarily somebody older than you. I have a lot of mentors that are half my age. Uh, mentoring is not about uh, I'm smarter than you are. Mentoring is not about necessarily about I have more experience than you do. Mentoring is a relationship of trust and total honesty where you can say things to somebody that you couldn't necessarily say to your boss or to your, your, your soulmate. You need a professional um, sounding board sometimes. And, and it's, it's okay to seek mentoring from somebody that doesn't know you if you admire their work. It's okay to seek mentoring from somebody that's, um, that you just have good rapport with. Um, if, you're, 
if you're looking for mentoring from somebody who's great, you're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to be charming. Be audacious. Ask for the person you, whose opinion you really want and whose work is, you, you really admire. They may say no. What does it cost you? Hire yourself a great boss. Barter your youth for experience. Look for that right matchup. Use yourself up. Place a high value on your own time. You only have so much of it. Don't die with a single good idea left in you untried. Timing. Do good work. Do nice, sensible good work. Get, get, get to be dependable and look for the right opportunity to go all in. You know, know, know the coin of your realm, match it up against the opportunity.